another year, another new version of Football Manager, which usually means another influx of new gamers to the franchise who've never played a Football Manager game before, have opened it up for the first time and have absolutely no idea where to begin. So whether you've picked it up on PC, downloaded it as part of Game Pass for your Xbox or your PC, or you're one of the new PlayStation 5 Football Manager players, this video will take you through how to set up a game so that it works the way you want it to work and try and minimize some of that early on confusion. If you happen to be watching this and you haven't even bought the game yet, by the way, as well, I have got a discount code at the top of the description, so feel free to check that out as well if you want to pick up the game on the cheap. But without further ado, let's take you through my beginner's guide to Football Manager 2023. Hello folks and welcome to my guide to starting a new game in FM23 if you are a brand new Football Manager player. I'll put it out there up front. If you've played Football Manager before, you probably don't need this video. You can probably skip this one. This is very much aimed at the new players who just have absolutely no idea where to begin. Obviously, feel free to stick around. I'm not going to tell you you can't watch the video. But this one is probably not for you. If you are new, my name's Kev. I make daily Football Manager videos here on YouTube and stream most days over on Twitch as well. All the links to that are down in the description below. So if you want to go more in depth on the stuff beyond what's covered in this video, there's plenty of stuff around on both of those channels that can help you out with that. Um, and make sure you subscribe, turn your notifications on. I've got more guides coming up for the new game over the next couple of weeks as well. So make sure you stick around for those. But let's jump straight in to setting up a new game. And that's basically going to be the the parameters for what we're going to be doing in today's video. This is very much about setting up the game, making sure it is going to run the way you want it to run, with the leagues you want to run, with the manager set up the right way. And there is going to be another video that comes out in a few days that is going to be more going through like the first week actually in-game once you've got it set up, and then there'll be further guides after that. So these will all go in a playlist. If this one feels a little bit too basic or entry-level for you, skip to the next one in the playlist. This one is covering the uh, the very early bases in the game. And when you load up the game for the first time, your screen will look a little bit like this. It won't look exactly like this, because if you've never played it before, you won't have the option to quick load your most recent save. Uh, but you'll have these other options on there, and uh, you can get started in your new game from here. But before you even do that, what I'd recommend you do is head into preferences, because there's a couple of things you might want to tweak in these preferences. Thing number one uh, you might want to tweak how zoomed in your game is to make sure that the text is a nice readable size on whatever device or screen size you're playing on. I play on a 4K monitor, so I have mine zoomed into 125%. Because so if I had it out at 100%, everything gets a little bit too small for me to be able to see with my old man eyes, even with my big, thick spectacles on. If you're playing on a 1080p monitor, you're probably fine leaving it at 100% um, at zoomed. If you're playing on a PlayStation, on a TV across the other side of the room, you might want to zoom in a little more. And if you're playing on a laptop that has a smaller than 1080p resolution, which is becoming increasingly rarer these days, but I know there are still people out there playing on older laptops uh, where you might have a lower resolution, you might actually want to drop it down to uh, maybe 90, 95, 85% to make sure that you can fit all of the information on the screen. It'll be a little bit smaller and more difficult to read, but it will all be there on the screen for you. So have a play around with those to get the game looking the way you want it to look. Um, you also want to make sure you're optimized for your PC's uh, graphics capabilities. The easiest way to do that is click recommend for this PC and it'll do whatever one is best suited to your uh, PC setup. I would recommend before doing this, make sure your graphics card drivers and everything like that are up to date as well. And um, because then it will make sure that it's perfectly matched with the setup that you've got. And then you also have the option to turn off game sound. Now, if you're new to the game, the game sound might not offend you as much as it offends some of us who've been around for a little while. Um, but for me personally, I want to be able to play this on my laptop in bed while my other half is sleeping. I don't want sounds to ever creep out of this laptop because then she'll know how late I've stayed up playing Football Manager. So I always turn the game sounds off in here as well. But I mean, you can fiddle around with all this and again, test the volumes, that kind of thing. The other things you might want to change in the options. If you're not in England, you can change the language, you can change the currency. And then once you go into the more advanced settings, you can go down to formats and actually change pretty much 
everything when it comes to like regional differences that you might have in the game. So you can change whether salaries are displayed weekly or monthly or yearly for some reason. In English football, we always talk about player salaries weekly. It's weird because we don't do that for any other profession. But for whatever reason, that's the only way we understand footballers' salaries. Oh, that guy's on a hundred grand a week. It's weird. I don't know why, but as an English football fan, I leave mine on weekly. But if you're in another country that looks at it monthly or annually, you can change it on there. Um, and then you can customize things like the temperature, um, height, distance, the way uh, gambling odds are displayed, the way dates are displayed. You name it, you can customize it to make sure that it's set up so that you understand what you're looking at because the game is complicated enough. If you're used to seeing people's heights in centimetres, the last thing you want to do is for it to be in feet and inches and you have another layer of stuff that you don't understand and need to work out. So make sure you customise all this stuff before you're up and running as well. And once all that's done, you're finally ready to hit start a new game and then you're presented with options. If you're just looking to play a normal football manager career, believe it or not, you hit the career button. That's the one we're going to be hitting in just a moment. But you do have some other options as well. You can do your career and play it online against other people if you want to do that. You can either host your own game or join an existing game. Um, you can do that using the online career option. Uh, you can actually create your own club using the built-in creator club system as well. If you don't want to manage a real-life club, you can set your own club name, ground name, uh, kit designs, player uh, squad, all sorts of stuff. Um, it's quite a cool way to have a unique game experience, as is Fantasy Draft, which is a whole different game mode um, that starts you off with a budget, fantasy football style, you'll have a budget of X amount of pounds and you'll work through in a draft, putting your squad together and then play matches either against the AI or against your friends. You can do that on your own or online. And then they have Versus mode as well, which you have to be a member of FMFC, which is basically Football Manager's mailing list, but it's easy to sign up for. It doesn't cost anything to do. And then you can uh, just play one-off games against other people with the game, um, either using the preset teams that are already in the game, or you can even take your team from your single-player game and then go and challenge yourself with that team against other people in versus mode. So it's quite a cool thing. We're not going to cover any of these in this video. Um, if there's enough demand for a deeper dive on any of these game modes, let me know down in the comments and I can make that in a future video. But for today, we're starting a career and that brings you to this screen where you select what type of career you want. So you choose, do you want to be a club manager, an international manager, both, or unemployed? If you're brand new to the series, I would recommend you start, recommend you start off as a club manager and specifically at the club you support. There's a lot to learn when you're getting into football manager for the first time. I always look to minimize the learning curve as much as possible. So if you've got a team where you already know the players, you already know the style of football they play, the weaknesses, the sort of players you might want to bring in, it's just one less thing to learn early on. So I'd pick a team that you're most familiar with. Um, and if you are tempted to throw yourself straight into international management because the World Cup is right on the doorstep, bear in mind international management and football manager is slow. It still simulates all the club stuff as well you have long gaps between your matches i would recommend if you want to manage internationally fill your boots but do a club as well do both because otherwise you're gonna have a lot of waiting around between your international matches and um, if you want to start unemployed it's a little bit more of a challenge obviously you don't necessarily know what club or even what league you're going to be in you're probably not going to have the summer to set up your club, do your transfers, get your staff exactly how you want them to be. You might not find a job until October, November time. So it does add a little bit of extra challenge. And for that reason, I would probably avoid that on your first save. So for me, um, I'm just going to go with Arsenal and we'll get that set up from there. If you're completely new, just hit quick start from here. You don't really need to do anything else. You can be playing the game super quick. But there are things in advanced setup that are worth tweaking if you want to spend the time doing a little bit more of a tweak. Um, the first thing that it asks you to do is select which leagues are active in your game. If you just quick start, it will automatically do this for you. So if you want to be able to control what leagues you can uh, you have loaded up in your game, this is the screen to do it. Um, you can also choose the size of the player database as well. And these two things combined contribute towards the estimated game speed. It's a rating out of five and gives you an indication of how quickly the game will run on your computer. 
So it does take your computer specs into account. I would recommend you don't start a save unless you've got at least three stars on the estimated game speed, because otherwise the loading times, the processing times between matches start to get painfully long. Um, so let's say I want to have a large database. You can see the difference between a large and a small is about 6,000 players. They're not going to be 6,000 players at the absolute top either. So if you're playing in the Premier League, you probably don't need a larger database or it will load in players from other parts of the world as well. So I always tend to go with a large database. You can even customize this further and load specific players from specific nations or divisions, probably outside the scope of this video, but there are options you can play with here if you want to really customize the player pool that are loaded up within your particular save game. And then pick the leagues that you want to you wanna be running. The game will recommend ones that work for you based on the team that you're going to be managing. So with me managing Arsenal, obviously we have to have England loaded. And then it recommends some other nations as well and explains why. Um, in fact, it doesn't explain why. It used to explain why. But you can just click the ones with the stars on. So if we click all of these ones that have a star next to them, um, and then we can see how that would run the game. So got quite a nice selection of leagues there. We still get four stars of game speed. You can adjust how deep down in the pyramid you get in each of these nations as well. I would probably recommend if you're looking to do a longer term save to add Argentina and Brazil as well, just to keep the balance in place over a longer term save uh, because players, uh, the newly generated players that start to take over the game as you get deeper into it, they don't generate as many of them in nations that aren't loaded. They'll still have players. If you don't load Brazil, there'll still be Brazilian players you can sign. There just won't be as many new ones coming in in the future. So if you want to be able to sign Brazilian wonder kids, probably make sure you have Brazil loaded and also make sure things like the World Cup and that kind of thing are competitive. But adding them in with those leagues we already had takes us down to two and a half stars, which for me is a little bit slow. So if I just try and customize some of these i think we might take out um we might take out wales ireland and northern ireland i'm unlikely to want to manage in any of them or end up going to any of those um and that gives gets us back up to three star game speed that's fine i'm happy with that as a setup you've then got a few advanced options to work through they're all Pretty self-explanatory. Um, if you hover over the little tool tip, um, it will tell you what each of what each of these does. But for a very quick summary, um, use fake players and staff. If you're new, avoid this like the plague. It basically removes all of the real players and staff from the database and generates new ones. So you can't bring any outside knowledge in. This is truly playing football manager on number, number one top hardest difficulty mode. Um, don't do it if you want to be able to play with real players because they will all be gone. Do not use real fixtures is a weird one. I'm not sure why you wouldn't want to use the real fixtures. They don't have real fixtures for every league, but all of the licensed leagues, where they're available, they'll have the real life fixtures in. So if you're managing in the championship, for example, which is a licensed league, um, and you're managing the team you support, they'll have the same fixtures in game as they've got in real life this season. I think that's quite cool. So I've never turned that off. You can turn it off if you want them to be randomized for some reason. Uh, do not add key staff is a is a personal preference run really as a standard with that off um that so sorry with that on which is what the standard is i think i don't think i've tweaked that um that doesn't add key staff to play it to positions that are missing so for example if you've got a club that doesn't have a physio without that ticked when you start the new game up they'll just generate a physio and add them in so it's up to you whether you i i leave it like that uh, because it's how it is, and I don't think it makes much difference. I could just as easily take it off. Certainly managing a bigger club like Arsenal, I don't think I'm going to notice a difference. Where it really becomes a difference is when you're down in non-league and you might want to just go out and get all of your staff yourself rather than having the game give you staff, and then you can tweak that if you want to tweak it. Uh, similarly, add players to playable teams does the same thing, uh, but with players, this one is off by standard, um, but doesn't have the negative with the tick, so it kind of means the same thing. Um, as a standard, it doesn't add players to teams. So there might be teams that aren't very well researched. This is tending to be the smaller teams in the smaller nations. Uh, they might not have many or any players. And then if you start a team managing them, start a save managing them, there might not be any players there. You'll have to sign an entire squad. That's fine if that's how you want to play it. If you don't like the sound of that, you can tick this box and it will add a squad of generated players. They won't be real players. 
there'll be players that the game is generated just so you have a starting squad to work with. Um, because I, again, because I'm managing a big club, it's not an issue. So I'll just leave that off. There's no reason uh, to make it do all the extra work when it doesn't need to be done. If you want full realism, you can disable the transfer window in the uh, in the first. So disable the first transfer window. So no clubs are able to do any transfers until after the first of September, um, because the game comes out October November time. It has all of the summer transfers in right up until the end of that window. So it might feel a little bit. Some people find it a little bit odd to then redo the transfers again, even though they've already been done. So it's quite nice to just play it, play the squads as they are until Christmas and then have January be the first transfer window of your save. So you can turn that on if you'd prefer to do it that way. I leave it off. And then attribute masking is basically the fog of war in the game. Um, so it means that you can't see all of the attributes for every player, uh, which I think is a good thing because I want to have to use the game mechanics like scouting and watching players to learn how good they are. I don't just want to be able to go to the Portuguese ninth division and know all the attributes of all the players instantly. So because of that, I leave attribute masking on. Some people want the opposite. So they'll disable attribute masking to allow them to go and use the player search screen and filter for left backs with 19 tackling and 18 heading because they want to be able to do that. I prefer to do it a different way, so I leave it unticked. Um, this box prevent control of teams with managers in place. Very self-explanatory. If a club has already got a manager, you can't take over from them. Um, you already know, really, based on who you've already chosen to manage at this point. But um, you can you can leave that. You can tick that if you don't want to be able to take over clubs that have already got a manager. Goes nicely hand in hand with an unemployed save, I guess. And then the last one, prevent use of the in-game editor. It's absolutely personal preference. The editor at the time of recording isn't even out yet, so I don't need to have this ticked. I always have it ticked because I'm a YouTuber and I don't want people to be able to accuse me of editing my saves, so I always make it so they're impossible to edit. Uh, but on the flip side of that, you might like, might want to use the editor, and if you want to use the editor, make sure you untick that or you're not going to be able to, even if you download it. And then the last thing on this screen is uh, is picking a start date based on the... I would just leave that based on the club you're starting with. So for me, um, that means we're going to be starting in June 2022, early pre-season in England. Once all that's done, hit start game. It confirms what you're setting up and then does all of the background processing. Depending on how much you're loading up, this can take a couple of minutes. So I'm just going to put a cut in the video here because otherwise we're just sat watching a loading bar. So after a little bit of processing to get the game set up, we get to the creator manager screen. I already have one created because I've already played this year's game, but let's hit new profile so we can see it exactly as you'll get it. And then you basically just pop your details in here. I don't think I need to explain uh, how this section actually works. Most of it doesn't really have any kind of impact on how the game plays. Um, some of it, I mean, we, we don't need to put my real date of birth in. That'll do. Make myself a little younger than I am. Things like putting in who your favourite club is, um, that might actually have an impact on in-game stuff. So, for example, I've picked that I'm going to manage Arsenal. If I put Arsenal as my favourite team, that'll come up in like media interactions and things like that. Um, and one thing I would make sure on this screen you don't fiddle with if you're new um, is the tutorial bit, experience level. Um, you want it to teach you about key management concepts because otherwise it turns off the tutorials and you are on your own and you're going to want those tutorials on because there's still an awful lot to learn. You then create your guy. Um, you can randomize it to whatever level you want and then tweak it accordingly. Um, I mean, this is all very much personal preference stuff. You can generate a 3D model of your own head if you want to. I believe it or not, don't feel the need to do many. I mean, why change that? That is absolutely perfect. And then once again, you can randomize the clothes. That again, looks pretty good for me and give yourself some random accessories as well. And then jump into managerial style, which is a little bit more important when it comes to actually playing the game because you need to choose what kind of manager you're going to be. Um, it, key, it has this box ticked initially, and I would recommend you leave that ticked. Suggest your coaching badge based on the club you're managing and your past playing experience based on the club you're managing. If you want to tweak this stuff, if you don't want to be a former international global level footballer, um, if you want to be a semi-professional footballer or somehow men, men ended up at Arsenal, you can do that. But I don't know if you noticed when you did that, 
the attributes that you've got available to make your manager any good reduce. So the lower these are, the lower the attributes you've got to play with are. At the lowest level, with no coaching badges and just Sunday League experience, you really don't have a lot to play with at all. Um, so I would recommend you match it to the club that you're going to be managing so that you're at roughly the right level for the club that you're going to manage. Um, you can then choose... Do you want to be more of a um, more of a mental manager, so like a, a suit wearing manager, or do you want to be more of a coaching based manager, more of a coach? So, do you want your attributes to be more towards coaching or more towards mental attributes, or just in the middle? Um, it's completely up to you. I would suggest the bigger the club you're at, the more you probably want to leave, lean towards mental attributes because you'll have a large coaching team to do the coaching for you. If you're down in deepest, darkest non-league where you might only have an assistant manager and a physio working with you, you probably want to be able to do some of the coaching yourself. So you might want to lean more towards coaching attributes. Um, or if you don't want to fiddle with any of this at all, you can just pick the kind of manager you want to be and it will do that bit for you. So if you think you want to play the game as a tactician, you can click the tactician option and it actually balances the attributes to give you that kind of uh, setup anyway. So lots of different ways to set this screen up. The easiest way is to use management style focus. Um, you then confirm that, hit start playing, and it does a little bit more processing and loading um, and brings you to this screen, which is your first confirmation that you are in place at your new club. If you're in a licensed league, you get your proper kits and everything behind you here as well. But unfortunately, Premier League not licensed. Um, but there is some useful stuff to pull out of this screen before you even get into the main part of the game. And um, if it's a club you're not familiar with, this is all quite useful because it gives you an immediate snapshot of what your club is about, what their history is, how good the media think they are, what kind of stadium and facilities they've got, what the financial situation is. So if you are playing a club you're not familiar with, there's certainly information to pull out of this screen. And then this is really useful as like an opening snapshot to give you an idea of what your starting point is with your club. It gives you the tactic that they currently play slash is best suited to the squad. It's kind of open to interpretation what this tactic actually is, but the tactic that the club would typically play and then the best 11 to fit within that tactic. So you know who your best 11 players are, who your best team is right from the start because that gives you an idea that you can then build from. You might not want to use this. You might want to tweak this. You might think that, for example, at Arsenal, Saliba is better than White at centre-back. So you might disagree with it even, and that is all fine. Um, but it gives you a useful little starting point, as well as giving you some little key snippets of information here. Like, we know the key player is Gabriel Jesus. That, mean, that means he's the best player at the club. It's generally a professional squad. The, the hot prospect at the club, Charlie Patino, top earner, Thomas Partey. And you get all these little bits of information that allow you to start thinking in terms of what you're going to do with your squad. You then hit next again, and you have a meeting with the managing director, the chairman, the director of football, whoever's basically in charge of the footballing side of your football club, uh, where you discuss the club vision for the club that you're taking over. And this stuff is important because it gives you an idea not just of what you need to achieve in your first season over the course of your first few seasons, but also how you need to achieve it. And um, because if you don't do things the way the board want you to do them, you might get fired even if you're hitting other objectives. So we can see here with Arsenal that the board culture is they want to sign players under the age of 18 for the future. So that's that's a, a, a overarching feature of how this club want to be. You need to go into this kind of club thinking in terms of signing young players for the future because that's how this club wants to be. If you go in and just sign a bunch of 30-year-olds on three transfers and then, and then finish fourth... You might have hit the criteria of work towards challenging for the Premier League title, but you did it the wrong way and they might sack you anyway. Um, they're less likely to because the importance of this one is desired rather than required. Um, our required objectives are sign players to sell for a profit and work within a budget. So if you're over your budget and you overpay for a load of players and basically don't manage your money correctly... That's the fast track to getting fired at Arsenal. This will all vary from club to club. You then have your five-year plans. So you know what you're working towards long term. So for Arsenal, that's qualifying for the Champions League, um, winning the Europa League, 
and being competitive in the two other cups. So pretty tame five-year plan, to be honest. And it does break it down season by season to show you exactly what you need to be doing each year. So first season um, isn't showing on there for some reason. We go straight into the second season, which is a weird one. But by the end of the second season, they want you to be challenging for the Premier League title. Um, and I mean, that never changes. It's the same objective every year. How ambitious are Arsenal? They want to sign kids and just finish in the top four. And they'll be happy with that forever. Pathetic. Very sad. But now you know what you're working towards. Um, and then you've also got the uh, the other club vision stuff that comes out of your supporters. So you have the board. You have this that's new for this year. What your supporters want. So again, we're starting to get a feel for how you need to build this club. How you need to build this team. So in addition to all the stuff that the board want, the supporters will only be happy if you're playing attacking, entertaining football. So you can't go into Arsenal, play a back seven and just grind out nil-nils because the fans will hate it. And if the fans turn on you, guess what? You're probably going to get fired. And then the other objectives for Arsenal, uh, for the fans, interestingly, the fans are happy just getting into the Europa League. The board want the Champions League. The fans are happy with the Europa League as long as... You qualify for the Europa League whilst also finishing above Tottenham and Manchester United. All three of those are required. Um, and then they'd quite like you to be competitive against Chelsea as well. But understand Chelsea at the moment might be a level above Arsenal and uh, you might struggle. Not necessarily reflected in real life, but in game, that's where we are. Um, and then we go into this last bit on here, which is to do with all of the, um, all of the tutorials and in-game inductions. If you're completely new, I would recommend you ask for them all to be sent immediately because you want to get all of the tutorials done as early as you possibly can. You can see that I've already completed some of these through other saves, but you want to have all of the inductions, all of the, tut the tutorials, because as you can see, there's a lot to learn and these tutorials are quite good. Don't skip them. They are pretty useful. Um, and then lastly, do you want to do you want to schedule a press conference? Completely personal preference. Do you want an intra-squad friendly? So first team against reserves. Again, completely personal preference. And how often do you want to meet your backroom staff? Completely personal preference. Although if you're new, I would suggest you probably leave all that as it is. You want to meet the media. You want to get a feel for how good your team is. And you want to have those meetings as often as you possibly can because your backroom staff lean on them. They will give you all sorts of tips. You then confirm that, get your game saved, and you are ready to go. So let's save that. And we're going to stop it there for this video because there's another video coming up in a couple of days time, which is going to be me taking you from this point through your first week in the job. So we've got our save set up, but we haven't done anything yet. There's still a lot to do before we are in a position to start really getting into the nitty gritty and actually managing some football matches. So Keep an eye out for that video. If if you're watching this more than a couple of days in the future, it's the next video in the playlist. So check down and grab that. But that will take you through the first week in charge of the new club. So things like assessing your squad, selecting a tactic, getting your training and your scouting set up and all that kind of stuff will be covered in the next video. So hopefully that has been a help in getting you set up in a new football manager game. If you are playing on PlayStation or Xbox, some of the screens might be ever so slightly different. I'm recording this before those versions are actually released, so I've not been able to get my sticky little fingers onto them yet. That being said, as soon as they are released, I will get both copies and do videos specific to those. So if you feel like that wasn't quite what you needed because you're playing on one of the console versions, again, there will be videos on the channel as soon as those versions are out where you can check those out as well and get more of a specific tailored guide to those versions of the game but if you have enjoyed this video or if it's helped you out please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on it for me the more likes the more engagement we get on this kind of video the more likely i am to do this kind of video in addition to my daily let's plays subscribe to the channel for all those other goodies i've mentioned that are coming and for the daily videos as well my chelsea save in the beta is a lot of fun you should check that out it is cool and i do stream on twitch twitch.tv slash delujo most days as well so make sure you give me a follow over there and come hang, come hang out in the stream happy to answer any questions over there on any of the stuff that's come up in this video or anything else football manager related really and thank you very much for watching